Speaker. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And uh, it is a pleasure to speak on a bill which is actually in an area of, of absolute importance for this economy. Um, biosecurity and, and border protection is probably the most important area. Uh, the amount we spend on um, military security is huge. The amount we spend on biosecurity is minimal. The last Labor government doubled the amount of money spent on biosecurity, doubled the amount, and that member who was the opposition spokesperson has to acknowledge that fact alone. Uh, what he should also acknowledge is the fact that the first budget under the national government chopped $2 million off the biosecurity budget and chopped 54 frontline jobs. That's the indication of, of I guess, the the flippant approach that the National Party has paid to biosecurity. Mr Speaker, the Labor uh, Party supports this bill, um, but there are a number of issues. We, we supported this proposal to share the costs of, of, uh, of biosecurity, of border protection at new and emerging air airports so that um, Anyone who wanted to develop a new airport couldn't just say, well, we've got our airport, we've got our runway, and we want the taxpayer to come and fund the border, border security. There was an obligation clearly under this legislation that, that um, any new airports um, and those that might have been shut and are reopening will, in, will engage in a cost-sharing arrangement with the Crown, and, and we believe that's fine. The problem is, the question is, why are we doing that? And, and we were... We proposed that in government as a fair way of sharing the increasing costs, the doubling of the biosecurity budget that we had put in place. We thought it was fair that we shared some of the additional costs with, with um, the industry. The problem here is that the national government has chopped $2 million, and the reason they've done it and the reason they're bringing in cost-sharing arrangements under this bill is so that they can pay $14 billion in tax cuts back to their wealthy mates and the people at the highest end of the salary bracket. Yes, that member over there is one of them. Yes, and so am I, but not quite to the extent of the Prime Minister who gets $1,000 a week back. And the way that the national government has been able to calculate that it can afford that is by chopping the biosecurity budget and by sharing the additional costs of arrangements and new airports. The chairman of the Finance and Expenditures Committee should listen a little bit because he is responsible for overseeing this absolutely immoral, immoral policy of giving back to the most wealthy and taking from those people at the bottom. Mr Speaker, it is immoral, and the problem is this bill is just one more little step down that unethical direction that the National Party is taking us. Mr Speaker, it is important. I mean, the member um, previous to my speech said that eight tonnes of raw meat was bought into the country um, while we were in government. It's a horrific figure. I have to admit that. How much is coming in now? Well, the member can't tell us. He can't tell us because, in fact, this government has chopped the number of people inspecting visitors into this country, so we don't actually know how much meat is coming into this country. The eight tonnes identified and held at the border was because we had a supported and a well-resourced border frontline border system, Mr Speaker, with, with good people. Those people have been battered around the uncertainty of will they lose their jobs or is it their mate? 54 frontline jobs. That is quite a number when you consider the, 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 those that we have at, at the airports, Mr Speaker, and at the ports. Um, but as I say, we've had, we've had a national government intent on get, delivering tax cuts at the expense of core services right through this economy. Mr Speaker, I will acknowledge the Primary Production Select Committee. I think for the most part, and it's chaired by, by uh, Shana Dern over there, who 
should really be uh, the Minister of Agriculture. Um, he knows agriculture far better than the, the, the Minister. Mr Speaker, he does attempt to do a fair job, but he's under riding instructions. He's told what to do by Mr Carter. He resists that, but he's told what to do. He's got to you know, bite the bullet and, and just kind of toe the line. He knows that the cuts that the national government, that his colleagues have made to biosecurity, put our country at risk every single day. Mr Speaker, last year, last year under the national government, 400 unwanted organisms came into this country. They're, they're just the ones, 400. Just the ones identified. Yeah, Mr Ardern knows that. He knows the risks that come with those incursions, Mr Speaker. We've got the Asian bee now established in Australia. We've got the Prime Minister on his fast gate so that you can save, in theory, eight minutes coming through the airports. Eight minutes saved by an individual visitor. Do the bees use fast gate? I think the bees might avoid fast gate. I think the bees will be able to whistle in, whistle in unhindered. And while we may joke about that, bees would, are, the, are driving our biological economy, Mr Speaker. And Mr Ardern knows this, he's acknowledging it now. If we get the Asian bees in here, along with Varroa, unfortunately in the country, we could undermine the biological production in this country, Mr Speaker, and people don't appreciate that, but Mr Ardern nodding his head knows that his Prime Minister, John Key, in his determination to be popular, has introduced Farscape, taken frontline resources from biosecurity people and customs people, shifted it across into some photographic kind of automated system that, get, that gets you through the process eight minutes. Never mind the reality that you wait about 20 minutes for your bag in Christchurch or Wellington. I don't know about Auckland. So you whistle through the biosecurity and customs clearance and then you wait for your bag for longer because the privatised companies simply don't have enough staff on the ground. Mr Speaker, that's the way we're moving and unfortunately that puts at risk our whole primary production economy from things like the Asian bee, from things like fruit fly in, in Queensland, where we've effectively got open borders with Australia now. Now, we're going to run videos. We're going to be nice to people and educate them. In the end, one person who doesn't understand the language well, one person who does not understand the implications of bringing in fruit or bringing in meat or bringing in an unwanted organism, those people put our economy at risk every single day. Mr Speaker, we support this bill because we proposed it as a fair cost-saving arrangement. We do not support the ongoing direction of this government that they will cut back on core government responsibility and services to deliver additional benefits to the rich mates around the place, Mr Speaker. And that's what they've done. That is effectively what they have done. I don't know what my colleague Mr Barker got in terms of tax cuts delivered by the national government. Probably reasonably generous, was it? Too much? Exactly. But what, what did the people at the bottom get? A few cents? Not enough. Absolutely. And the bottom line is that we've squeezed government services and people in ACC, people in the social welfare system, people in health, people in education are seeing programs chopped to pay for those tax cuts. Mr Speaker, this, this bill is one more step down that slippery slope of reducing government responsibility and increasing the responsibility on the private sector to fund, it, fund these things. Now, user pays is a great theory, but in the end, the public good, the greater good, cannot be covered by individuals or individual companies or individual industries. In the end, we take taxes to fund the things that are for the good of our economy and for our future, Mr Speaker. And we cannot allow this national government to continue to squeeze biosecurity, to squeeze frontline border services. At the moment, they've put money into the joint border management system, Mr Speaker, which is 
collaboration on the face of it sounds good. It's about joining and sharing information. But if that means that frontline border security people are cut, their jobs are cut, their resources are cut, then that is a desperate and dangerous situation for this economy. And Mr. Sorry to interrupt the Honourable Member. Vote his against time his own expired. national government. I uh, call Gareth Hughes. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. I wrote